I want to do this with Hex watching because she decided to upload a video game or a video on my video game, Honkai Star Rail. As the Honkai Star Rail content creator, I'm going to have to run you down and hold you accountable for these here takes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get in here. So you're saying the abysmal new player experience in Honkai Star Rail. I would heavily disagree. I would heavily disagree. So let's see what you say. This is on April 1st. No, it's not on April 1st. You no longer have the buffer. Let's see, Hex. Let's see what you said. My name is Hex Juice, and I am here to talk to you about the absolutely abysmal state of the new player experience in Honkai Star. Okay, I have a hot take. All right, here's the thing. Okay. All right. Hex, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this, Hex. You're not going to like this. Okay? Okay? I'm going to just keep it a buck with you. I'm going to keep it a buck. If you're a VTuber and your boobs are bigger than your face, where do you think I'm going to look? All right. Moving forward. Moving forward. Just want to address that. Just want to address it. Okay? And I'm going to keep it a buck. That's the same in real life. Okay? If your boobs are bigger than your face in real life, where do you think I'm looking? Hey. Sorry, boys. Just keeping it, keeping it at 100%. Anyways. Are real. As a newer player myself, I have discovered how difficult it can be to get into the game. I have seen a lot of the pitfalls that people fall into at the advice of guide makers. <coughs> Building Dr. Ratio is a complete scam. And I want to talk about how this. What do you mean by that? What do you mean building Dr. Ray shows a complete scam? What do you mean by that? Will continue to affect the community in the future. It is something that I am concerned about as someone who is getting more and more into Honkai Star Rail. I've been really, really enjoying the game since I got Acheron and stopped using Dr. Ratio <coughs> complete scam unit. But. Oh, Hex, you shouldn't have uploaded today. Oh, man. Oh, this is gonna be a good video. This is gonna be a good video. This is gonna be a good video. All right, we're gonna break this down bit by bit. Today's video is sponsored by Call of the Wild, The Angler. They're dropping an all new DLC called South Africa Reserve. Call of the Wild, The Angler is the go-to game for the best fishing experience in a game ever. The South Africa Reserve brings 13 new species of fish, bringing it up to 16 in total. This DLC includes includes 150 plus bespoke activities and missions, offering a variety of new challenges like the three fishing clubs. These fishing clubs add a skill-based dimension, each providing unique challenges and rewards tied to very specific fishing methods. Relax and unwind at one of your favorite fishing spots or get up and explore the vast and great outdoors with your friends. If you're a fan of hunting or fishing games, use my link in the description and the pinned comment is really a no-brainer. Available on PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and Steam. So what exactly Exactly are you waiting for? Use it now. Become a master angler. And now back to the rest of the video. I hope you guys enjoy. I have a lot of thoughts about this. And I know that this might in some ways be a bit of a hot take, but I do it out of all of the love and respect for the community possible. So I hope that you will hear me out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think down below. And hey, boy, say it with me. We will not hear you out. All uh, right, here, let's uh, go change the category to Honkai Star Rail. And let's get into it. I hope that you enjoy this snippet of my stream. I know I'm going to enjoy Subscribe! it. The new player experience nice. in Honkai Star Rail is very poor. A lot of y'all forget. Incorrect. Yet that people have not all played since day one. I have not forgotten that. In fact. Why am I being attacked? Hey, Hex, 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 Hex. You made a video saying all this shit. Now I'm gonna, you know, hey, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to listen to it. I'm gonna have to weigh in. Okay, when you're calling my game abysmal, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do the old fact check a Rooney. Okay, we're just gonna go on fact check here real quick. A lot of people who would keep the game alive and refreshing uh -huh. the community yep. would people be people who have not played since day one. And this is something that I know is very prevalent because all the time I get comments, I get chat messages. Well, why don't you have this? It's been there since day one. Why don't you have that? It's been there since day one. Okay, so here's the thing. Those messages only exist because you're a streamer, right? 
When a new player starts and they're playing by themselves, they don't have a chat. So they're not being barraged with, do you, why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? They're, no one's saying that, right? Because the majority of people who play this game play offline, don't know what somebody else's account looks like, and they're just simply playing the game. And people, like, actually, I think, actively forget that there are people who could play Honkai Star Rail who have not played since it released. And that's okay. I it's think that's fair. There are people who have forgotten that mentality, sure. The hardcore dump is 100%. It's all right, because realistically, obviously. I will be real. Streaming, streaming a Hoyoverse game as a new player sucks. If you think Honkai Star Rail is bad, try Genshin. Okay, if you don't have 400 CCV across all of your characters, they're going to call you a shitter and tell you to kill yourself, right? Or if you're white, either or. Obviously, a lot of us in some form or in fashion are refugees from Genshin Impact. The sure. difference with Honkai Fair. Star Rail and Genshin are many, but one of the biggest ones Fair. is that Honkai Star Rail is significantly more complicated. There is not a <sighs> an elemental system in Honkai Star Rail. Is Honkai Star Rail more complicated? I would say yes. I would say there are some game modes where I enter it and you get information overloaded from the get-go, especially when you get down to Swarm 5, Golden Gears, 100 million percent, 100 million percent. And Genshin Impact's like, oh, take these four little dudes and do a hyper bloom, and then you kind of just win the game. So I think that's fair. Okay. Not if you read... Yes, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You don't got to read in Genshin, right? You just got to see, oh, Dendro, Electro, Hydro. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, that's pretty much all you got to do, right? Because there's systems in this game where you have to, like, know what you're doing in Golden Gears, know what you're doing in Swarm Disaster, know what the buffs do, know which direction to go, right? It, it, there is a lot more information to take in. And you got to understand, guys, there's a lot of players, myself included, when we see things we have to read, we go, <laughs> no, <Nah>, I'm good. <laughs> How hard can it be? Not everybody's going to go, all right, let me, let me give you an example. Chick-fil-A sauce. We all know it. We all know the taste of it. Closed on Sundays. What is this Christian bullshit? You know, gay people, man. Give me my Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A sauce. Okay. You get this shit, right? How many of y'all have read that? How many of y'all have read this? How many of y'all read every ingredient list you get when you drink a soda? You don't. And the only time you've ever read it, is when you're on the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, and you're bored, you accidentally find one of these son of bitches in your pocket, and you go, eh, okay, oh, wow, soybean oil, sugar, barbecue sauce, wow, right? You just wouldn't do that. I still do? No, you don't. That pads out damage. Back in my day, yeah. I had... Okay, let's relax here. Okay, Hex, you're, you're, you're max 25 years old. Let's chill out with this whole back in my day shit, okay, kid? Let's relax. Last time I checked, you still got a full head of hair on your head. Let's calm down with this with this old boomer talk. A uh, relatively well bu built Tu Tao. I had a shittily built Xing Cho, and I could explode basically anything. The, yep. ar the, re the artifacts were not nearly as important. In Fair. Honkai Star Rail, you kind of have to have really good artifacts, and and you have to you have to farm relics a lot more seriously. Uh, I, mean, I don't know about that. Uh, no. I don't know. I mean, I think you can get away with a lot of shit. The, the problem is, is that when you're a streamer and you see these people and they're like three cycling, when you have 10 whole cycles, like you got to understand, like once you get, here's the, here, here, once you get, once you get good damage dealer, once you get good healer, you're good to go. Now, here's the thing. A new player, a new player can't complain Oh, I started the game two weeks ago and I can't beat all the content in the game. You, you just simply can't. You simply cannot do that, okay? When you're a new player, you need goals to hit. So you should expect probably about three to four months of farming. Now, the problem is, is when people come into a new game, right, and they can't beat everything on day one. Well, you shouldn't expect to. I, th I think it's a matter of mindset. It's like, for example, when you play the game cookie run kingdom. I've seen a lot of people go in and say, oh, well, well, dude, I, like, I, I'm not even like number one in the whole planet. Like, what's the point of even playing this game? Okay, well, here's the great thing. Then don't play the game because you're annoying, right? There, there's called goals, right? And here's the great, here's the really great thing. When you run out of goals, it's kind of depressing. It is. It feels good.
to have something new to aim towards. So I feel like for a lot of people, and I feel like I'm not alone in that sentiment, I like when I'm not able to clear everything because it gives me something to work towards, right? Now you might say, okay, well, when you're a new player, you're weak. I mean, I, yeah, I hope so. I, I sure hope so. Because if a new player can come in and get the same power level as somebody who's been playing for over a year, well, then that's not going to look too good for the company. So I really don't think it's a bad idea that the new content is hard for new players because I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be. And the problem that I want to bring up about this is that, A, God, relics are worse in this game. <laughs> Because of the reality that there are so many more stats that can be on relics than in Genshin, farming. I don't. I don't think relics are worse. Am I crazy? I, I feel like the relics in this game are actually much easier to get because you can already get so many guaranteed stats, and there are so many systems where it's like, yeah, I need this main stat. I'll just choose it and I'll get it. Like the majority of things you can beat by just plus 12-ing everything with the good main stat. To be honest, like I'm not saying you're going to clear everything 36 stars, but you can get pretty damn far off of just good main stats. They both suck. They're, they're, they're worse in both games. Maybe I've played so many gacha games I've grown numb to it because I'll be real. I mean, Cookie Run Kingdom has this. Summoner's War has this. Epic 7 has this. Genshin Impact has this. Honkai Star Rail has this. Because the other thing is, is that getting relics and it taking a long time is also like important for the game's lifetime. Because once again, that's going to give you many goals to aim towards. And for a lot of players, the dopamine that you feel of getting a good relic is sometimes even better than pulling a five-star unit. And I'll just be real. Like when you get a 30 CCV relic, it's going to feel really good. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's this overwhelming issue of... Uh, in the genre specifically, and I'm talking gotcha games specifically. Like, for example, I'm not going to complain about Battle Royale issues and then say, oh, yeah, well, Tetris doesn't have this, right? I want to make that very clear. Like, these are things that every gotcha games do. They're by design. They're a way to give players another dopamine hit by getting that relic. And uh, I, I do feel like it is important to make getting those relics pseudo difficult. Because otherwise, if you were to get all the characters, get all the perfect stats, well, then you probably wouldn't play the game near as much, and that's not good for player retention. So it's a necessary evil. And uh, I, this is a very controversial topic, and I would love to know how you feel. Type 1 if you like grinding relics. Type 2 if you don't. Me, personally, I enjoy it. I'm a glutton for it. Every single time I log on and I get to get three more pieces of my biscuits and cookie run kingdom and I get to see if they're going to roll the proper stats, I enjoy it. You know, when I get to go do my four runs for Acheron and see if I get a new piece or get some more CCV, it's great. But yeah, it's good, Fob, uh, Fob Master 1. It's the only worthwhile thing to do in the endgame of Hoyo games. And Fob, I'm sure you'd agree, it's really not just Hoyo games. It's really not a it's really not just Hoyo games. It's pretty much every gacha game. I'm pretty sure you'd agree with that. You know, Epic 7, Wuthering Waves is going to have it. Cookie Run Kingdom have it. And Cookie Run Kingdom have it. Everybody's going to try to have it. Because that's the best game of all goddamn time, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, you, if you're not playing Cookie Run Kingdom, what are you doing? Like, low-key, what are you doing? Not Nikkei? Okay. Well, I mean, let's be real. I don't think you really play Nikkei for, like, gameplay. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure you play Nikkei for big ol' ass. Uh, me, personally. Right. So, I don't really think this is a universal problem. But I think it is fair to say... It is a problem for you, but I, I don't think it's fair to say it's it's a problem for everyone because some people like it. Let me say, a lot of people like it, and also a lot of people don't like it. It's it, it's a necessary evil. Alex in Honkai is miserable and the, disagree the other thing is is that because relics have a much higher level of importance in Honkai Star Rail, it means that the new player experience is naturally a bit more unpleasant. You have to have relics. Uh, I would agree that relics are more important in Honkai Star Rail than Genshin Impact. 100%, I would agree. Relics to do good damage. You cannot really farm relics until at least level 60. Let me tell you why that is. So the reason why you need better relics in Honkai Star Rail is because this is a turn-based strategy game. Once you E6-S5 your units, it is now just a turn-based game. Once you take out the strategy, well, then what is Honkai Star Rail? There's, there's pretty much nothing. If your entire team is juiced, like, who, like, genuinely, who gives a about watching a whale do memory of chaos. Oh, dude, are they going to kill it in zero cycles or half a cycle? Oh, my God. Like, okay, well, it's not even like they're now. Now all the enemies are just target dummies. That's all it is. There's there's no point. 
Like, at least when you watch somebody with a weak account, like, it's exciting to see if they can clear it or not. And it's exciting to shit on them when they don't. So I wouldn't say this is a problem for the game. I would say it's just a mindset thing. I, I, I am curious. I, I am curious. Let's, um, I think it took me four months to actually clear the memory of chaos uh, when I started Honkai Star Rail. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when you started Honkai Star Rail. When did she start Honkai Star Rail? Uh, maybe, do we know? Twitch tracker. Look up Hex Juice. You are at January, April. Here we go. So your first Honkai Star Rail stream is... So you've been playing since February 29th, 2024. So you're a little over a month. I think it's fair to expect to clear everything within four months of starting the game of casual play. But yeah, I mean, I would just say my advice would just be just, yeah, just keep grinding. To be honest, just keep grinding. I started before that and stopped. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying like of consistent play, you know, of consistent play. And the other thing is, is that where you're at in the game, and I'm going to just keep it real. You shouldn't even be focusing on like getting relics. You should be focusing on getting traces. I started last month at level 52. Well, I, I would love to see your account. I, I would love to say. You can't. But like, yeah, where you're at in the game, you should just be farming traces. Like until all of your shits are like eight minimum, I would just be farming traces. Farm relics at max efficiently until level 65. And that takes months. And so what that leaves is players who are unable to get damage, especially out of certain characters that really, really, really need high relic quality for months because so many players have been playing since day one and because most people who make guys i feel like this is being presented as a universal downside when it's just simply not right like for some people once for some people they might say oh it's gonna take me months to get strong enough to clear this and for other people they're gonna think oh i need to make sure i log on tomorrow so i can get my upgrades right like like Instant gratification isn't something that all players are going to instantly want. Like for me, like, <laughs> and for, and we also, again, we can pull this type one. If you like grinding type two, if you don't, I like grinding in games. Okay. I think it's fun. I like being able to log on, get incremental increases in power. And I don't see it as this massive, like, oh, now I got to play the game and get stronger. Oh God, it's going to take me months. The way that I think is, dude, I, I think in like two, three weeks, maybe even like a month, I think I can finally clear this shit, right? Like it, it's really a matter of perspective. And, and once again, this is a issue, issue with gotcha games in its entirety. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say this is an abysmal new player experience. It's kind of just how gotcha games are. Uh, gotcha games are innately grindy. Guides or make recommendations to players. A, both have played since day one, and mm. B, sort of do have the assumption that everybody else has played since day one. It means that the advice- uh, It really depends on the guide maker. I, I wouldn't say all guide makers are like this. I would say a lot of them are. I would say a lot of the Genshin Impact guide makers who also make guides for Honkai Star Rail are like this. But for Honkai Star Rail uh, content for guide makers, I would say, for example, Gotcha Smack. Gotcha Smack makes really good guides for new players and old players. It's like, for example, uh, the take of Acheron is unusable unless you're an endgame player is just simply incorrect because Acheron is one of the few characters that can be used at a very high, a very high potential level with early game characters that you get access to. Like Acheron is very, very, very good with um, Pela and Gwenyphon, right? And those are two four-star characters. Like the majority of other five-star characters, like, okay, well, you need this five-star character and you need this five-star support. Like for example, Acheron just does not need that. Acheron, Pela, Gwenyphon, give her a healer. You're good to go. You're, you're literally good to go. That's why Acheron is incredibly free to play friendly because like, for example, Jing Yuan is gonna want a sparkle, you know, and probably a Fu Xuan too. Oh God, Jing Liu without a Bronya or a sparkle is miserable. It's just simply miserable. Zila without a Bronya is miserable, like straight up miserable. Yeah, I mean, Kafka is another pretty free to play unit. I love my Acheron, thanks for recommending her. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, Kafka is another great one. I, I really enjoy using the units that are dot characters, and that's why I have a more nihility based account. I pulled the Black Swan, I pulled the Kafka, because they're very good with lower quality relics. 
right? Because you don't have to shoot for these insane crit rate, crit damage numbers. You just shoot for, get him some attack percent, get him some speed, get him over 134, you're good to go. You put boots on him, that's 25 speed taken care of. If you can get nine speed off of substats from your other one, two, three, four, five other pieces, it's pretty easy. Because that means if you were to have two speed on all of your relics, then you're already at 134. And that's pretty much all you need. Genuinely, that's all you need. Genuinely. And that's why I really enjoy dot characters because they just don't really need much. And they scale a lot off of attack. Well, guess what? You 15 your gloves. That's like over 234 attack right there. 100%. This ends up being my point about ratio, by the way. I, I think I can get... I think I can understand where you're going with ratio because uh, I'm sure you know. Hunt characters are very weak right now. But, but the reason why I like ratio... But yeah, we'll get to this. We'll get to this to the point. We'll get to this one. You didn't pull Huo Huo? Yeah, I know. Huo Huo would have made my account way better, but I'm going to be real. I don't like her. If I don't like a character, I'm going to be real. I'm not pulling her. I'm simply just not pulling her. I'm simply just not going to do that. Advice that you are given, it's not particularly usable. One of the biggest things that I was told was to build Dr. Ratio in most ways. Who told you that? That makes a lot of sense. Dr. Ratio is a free five star. Who, who said that? The problem as a new player with Dr. Ratio is multi- Dr. Ratio does need a lot of stats that you probably won't be able to use until like mid game, end game. Everybody. So was it your chat that told you to do that X or was there a specific content creator? Because for me, I feel like it's kind of known that Dr. Ratio is pretty good in certain scenarios, but he needs a lot of stats to make him work. And he's more like a toy rather than like a really good unit. Everyone gets told this. Oh, well, then I just think that everybody's a bad. I mean, that's kind of the reason why my guys were so good in Genshin Impact is because I pretty much prioritized only new players, right? And I would make literal, I would make literal guide videos for people who like started the new account. You know, I was like, hey man, this build's really good because these are relics that you're probably not using and you can make this character work. Like, that's why I kind of popped off as a guide maker for a long time. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's a general rule of thumb. These S tiers, that's cap. Okay? I'll be real. Okay, this shit, that's cap. Straight up cap. This shit, real shit. Real shit. This shit being S tier, nah. Straight up, lower them all. None of these characters here deserve S tier. They simply don't. They simply don't. Okay, drop this shit to A. Low key, bring Blade up. Blade is Blade is way better than you're giving them credit for. Okay, move everybody else down. Straight up. Okay, because these three, and tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm wrong. These characters are so much stronger than these characters. One tier ain't enough. It's just not. Them being one tier below, simply not enough. Should at least be two tiers. It's MOC only. Yeah, we're even for this. Bro, you know the difference. You know the difference between an Acheron and a Zila is not one tier. You know that for a fact. You know that for a fact. You think the difference between an Acheron and a Zila is a plus. Don't lie. You know that's the truth. You know it's the truth. You think the difference between a Jing Liu and a Zila is just a plus. Nah, that's cap. That's cap as f Move all these motherfuckers down. Leave S straight up open and let it be. And, and I mean this genuinely. If you think the difference between an Acheron and a Zila is the difference between an S and S+, plus, you are blatantly spreading misinformation. Genuinely. Genuinely. You cannot convince me. Let's just pull it up. Max E6 Zila nuke. Let's see. Okay. Zila hits E6. 252,000. Wow, bro. Yo. Hey, thanks, friend. I appreciate you. Woohoo! Oh, so uh, can you do me a favor? So I thought this was a lid, and that was not a lid. Can I have a napkin, please? Uh, no, I'll clean it. I just, I just, oh, I, I got it. Thanks. Sure? I just, yeah, I just didn't know that. That I, I had, you know, you have to like. No, nah, I got, it, I got. It. Thank you, though. <laughs> Thank you, though. 
Yeah, I just when I when I see something with a lid, I like assume it's a lid, and then it just like it just wasn't a lid. It was just like a, it was like a, it was like a bunch of holes. Deserved? Okay. All right. So let's just let's just be mathematical here. This is a showcase. E6 Zila. Oh, this is gonna piss people off. Okay. Two hundred fifty-two thousand. Acheron max DPS. Let's just look it up. E6 Acheron. Watch this. Okay. Memory of chaos. <laughs> Okay, memory of chaos. Memory of chaos. Okay, so Zeal's max hit was 256,000. This Acheron hit for 3.3 million seven months ago. Okay, then you send me a video. Then send me a video of Zeal popping off. Send me a video of Zeal popping off at memory of chaos. And let's let's see Zeal hit for 3.3 million. Hey, it. let's see Zila hit. Let's see Zila hit for two million. So let's see it, man. Yeah, but the tier list was E zero versus E zero. Okay, great. All right, let's put it up. E zero Acheron. E zero Acheron. Hello, everyone. If Hi, sweetie. Use that Payless Sparkle, Payless Silverwolf, Payless Silverwolf, Payless Sparkle. Okay, five hundred forty-five thousand, five hundred fifty-two thousand, seven hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand. E zero. I want you to look me in my eyes. Tell me, tell me, Azila can hit that at E zero. Yeah. So here's the thing. So when Acheron does that, that's a separate Zila alt for each target it's an unfair comparison yeah you want to know why it's unfair because acheron's good and zila is dog shit and you know she's bad you know she's bad and you're coping it's unfair because she sucks and acheron doesn't I i'm just keeping it real guys we we can sit here and we can and say th this right here is the issue that hex is falling into is this is the issue right here it's it's the y'all because y'all have zila and you're coping and you're mad because you know she sucks Guys, you know I have her too. Zila is f ass. And, and here's the thing. You can make her good. But then if you take the same relics and put them on an Acheron, put them on a Jing Liu, you're going to get four, five times the damage. And you know that's the truth. And here's the best part. With Acheron and Jing Liu, they'll use even less skill points. Because you know it as well as I know it. If Zila wanted to keep up with current standards, when she gets Resurgence proc, it shouldn't cost skill points. Hey, 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 tell me when I'm wrong. T tell me, tell me when I'm wrong. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. So we can sit here and we can pretend Zeal is still zero cycles. And yes, I'm sure if you spend $10 million, you can do that. But zero cycles don't matter. What matters is practical play. Sorry, man. You know Zeal does not keep up with standard, uh, standard current meta. And she should be brought down a tier. The difference between Acheron, because you have to understand, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pridwin. I'm sorry, because I like the people who run this. This is what we call a make sure everybody feels special tier list. Okay, it is. This is a make sure everybody feels special in their tier list. Okay, so let's write this down. So we have, bring it up. We have S plus, S, A, B, C, D. So what this should mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, or is it a new calculator? 100 divided by six, 16%. Bottom 16%, 32%, 48%, 64%, 80%, 96% and above, okay? You cannot convince me that a Acheron goes here and a Zila goes here. No, no. Because they're filling up spaces. And you want me to tell you, do you want me to tell you why I know they're simply only filling up spaces? Is because, is because there is no tier that is left empty unless it's at the bottom. That's why this is a feels tier list. A real tier list would put characters in a tier. And then if a character did not meet the tier, they would be bumped down a tier. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. Now, here's the thing. If I were to open... If I were to open this, let's just pull it up. Tier list maker, Pokemon, Smasher Pass. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. So here we go. On this Smasher Pass Pokemon tier list, and we'll just go and pull it up. Where is it? Well, we only have two on our list today, guys. We only have two on our list today. Okay. Uh, so we have Vaporeon. Oh, you're so lucky I can't scroll up. 
Okay, hold up. I got to find a better tier list. This will get my point across so people can actually understand this shit. Okay, so let's take, um, let's take Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, so today we only have two, two anime on our tier list today. Uh, today we're ranking uh, Fairy Tale and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, so here we go, guys. So Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is one of the best anime of all time, so we're going to give it an S tier. Uh, and then we have Fairy Tale. Uh, well, it's the only other one on the tier list, so I got to go fill up the top spot. That's not how it works. That's not how, that's not how tier lists work, okay? If this show isn't an A tier anime, then it's not going in the A tier just to fill up spots. It's going down to D tier where it belongs, and if a character's not A tier, they're not being put in A tier. So you're confused. Then tell me what you're confused about. In these tier lists, S tier characters, you don't just get to put characters in the S tier because they're, well, we got to fill up the spots. That's just not how it goes. These characters are not S tier. They don't belong in S tier. They belong in A tier. Now, do you understand or no? Do a tier list for HSR? I would love to. Send me a link. Send me a link. I can make one very easily. The issue that they also ran into is they bumped Zila down a tier. She'd be on par with Clara at E0. Okay, then bump Clara down. That's not our issue. She's not an S tier character. She's just, she's just simply not an S tier character. Okay, let's make this shit real quick. This will be easiest. Acheron's S tier. Sparkle's S tier. Uh, uh, Black Swan, but uh, hold up, S plus tier. Hold up, S plus. All right, and then let's uh, add a row. Yep, here we go. Uh, S plus. S plus. Okay, all of these are S plus characters. Okay, and we're going to go for vague, vague use. Okay? You know, they're, they're, they're pretty good at almost everything. Okay, like uh, characters in S plus are characters that you can build and you will literally never, you will never regret. Fu Shuan, you'll never regret. Uh, oh man, you know, people are going to hate me for saying this. Uh, let's keep going. Let's see here. Um, Adventuring is going to be S plus tier. Uh, let's keep looking. Ruan May is going to be S plus tier. Uh, let's see. Jing Liu will be S plus tier. Don Hong will be S plus tier. Making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, Ting Yun A tier because she can be outscaled by two other supports. Uh, Bronya is kind of just like weaker sparkle right now, but she's still good enough to be put in S tier because she's better than Ting Yun. Uh, Yang Jing is B tier, Dr. Ratios, somewhere between B and A, put him in the A tier. Zila's A tier. Uh, Luoch is S tier. He's not as good as the other healers, but he's still pretty good. Uh, Topaz is pretty good, but you need a lot of other characters to be on your account. So if you build her as a standalone, then she might be a waste sometimes. Uh, and then we'll do, yeah, Homeboy's an S tier. Yu Kong's all right. You need a lot of Eidolons. Uh, Gallagher's all right. Misha's pretty bad. Uh, Zhui Yi can probably be pretty good, but needs higher investment. And who doesn't have a good damage dealer? Uh, then you have Gwenaifin, who's pretty good. You have Kafka, who's really good. You have Luka, who's all right. You have Blade, who's severely underrated. Uh, but getting a brony with him is pretty important. Uh, yeah, Jing Yuan should be on A tier. Uh, Klar should be at A tier. Gepard, uh, Gepard should be probably around an A tier because he gets outscaled by the other ones. Uh, and then we have Welt, who's S tier, very underrated. And uh, those are pretty much all the five stars. All right, cool, guys. So where's, oh, Huan Huan. Uh, Huan Huan is actually very good. Uh, Civil Wolf is also very, very, very good. Okay, and uh, Himiko has gotten better with Pure Fiction. Okay, uh, and then Bailu sucks. All right, what's the problem? Okay, now y'all tell me what the problem is. Tell me where I'm wrong. For general use, how is this wrong? Black Swan and S+, plus? yeah, because she is. Mm. Oh, fuck, that's a misclick. Supposed to be S tier. There we go. S tier. Sorry, misclick. Misclick, guys. Sorry, I was thinking of her boobs. All right, how is it? What's the problem? Argenti S tier? Argenti's really good. Blades A? No, he's not. He's S. He's really good. All right, anything else? Actually, Huang Huang should probably be an S plus tier. Bada bing, bada boom. Tier list correct. All done. It's kind of that. So where? So where's the issue? Made that shit in two seconds. You tell me which one of these characters you would regret building. Characters that you would regret building unless you had another unit that pairs well with them. Characters that are pretty good, but they get outclassed by other characters pretty severely. Characters that you probably don't want to build and then just trash. There you go. We even filled it up just like print one. Actually, let's go ahead and do this just to make it a little bit more apparent. Uh, garbage. Uh, yeah, physical MC, garbage. Let's bring it in here. Oh, yeah, Pela, S plus tier. I don't care what you say. Pela, broken. Yeah, and then uh, let's put, uh, yeah, hooks, garbage. Natasha's garbage. Yeah, Don Hunk, garbage. There you go, man. What do y'all think?
Oh, but let's just fill it up. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can probably go on A. Uh, she's gotten way better in Pure Fiction. Cheval's still decent. Sampo's A. Eh. Uh, Ching Che can be very good if you get E6. Uh, Su Shang's pretty mid. Uh, this chick, I've never used her. I don't want to write her. I haven't used the chick either. All right, cool. Good. Pale above Silver Wolf. Yep. She's way easier to build. She's way easier to get. And uh, she's pretty much, you can use her everywhere. Makes sense, no? So when a character isn't directly below another character, then you're good. Now let's let's do the accurate example. Let's do uh let's let's do an accurate example. Okay? Let's let's remove all of these and I'm going to make this very very easy for everyone to understand. This is going to be very 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 simple for everybody to understand. Okay. So we have Pridwin's tier list, which is Acheron, Acheron, and then we have where is he? Uh, Acheron, and then we have Don Hung Il, and then we have Jing Liu. Okay. Then we have Dr. Ratio, Jing Yuan, Zila, and then we have uh, Ching Chue at E6, and then we have Blade and Clara. Okay. So we have Blade and Clara. Where is Blade? There is Blade, and then there is Clara, and then we have Argenti and Serval. Okay. We have Argenti, and then we have. Serval, that's insane. That is insane. They have Don Hung, Don Hung, and then we have Kudu Kudu Girl, and then we have Himiko, that's insane. Uh, Hook, that's not Hook, Misha, Hook, and Arlon, Physical, Yang Jing, all the way at the bottom. God, that is pain. Okay, Arlon. I forget this character exists. Okay, cool. So here's how it works, all right? So we go like this, right? And then we go like this, okay? And then we go like this, right? Okay? There we go. Oh, and let's actually let's actually do this. Let's actually do this. Let's do add a row above, add a row above. Okay, let's make this even better. This way nobody can get confused, okay? This seems better. Okay, because right now having them only one tier above is going to let oh, sorry, hold up. Okay, much better. All right, so this this would more accurately describe how much better these three characters are than the rest of the characters on this list, right? So like one tier isn't like it's just not enough. And and you know what? Let's let's just keep it a buck here, real quick. Let's drop Dill down to like S tier, and let's put Jing Liu right there. Okay, now now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Okay, this is good. This is good. Okay, this would more accurately describe how the tier list actually work. And hopefully that can help newer players understand one tier isn't enough to truly express how much better these characters are. So yes, I would agree. Guide makers should have a certain responsibility of correcting that quote unquote misinformation. And uh, yeah, to truly make people understand how big of a difference there is between characters like Zila and characters like Acheron. Let's continue. He faceted. So he needs other characters to be good. He needs really good relatives. Oh, and for anybody saying that Dill is just as good as Jing Liu, yeah, Dill is just as good as Jing Liu as long as you spend eight times the skill points. Likes to be good. And it takes a very, 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 very long time for players to get to the point where they can actually farm relics that are good enough for him. And it sucks. It sucks for new players because. You are telling them to build a character that is not going to be worth it until very late game. In no. Nah, that's just kind of how it works. Uh, just build traces. It's pretty easy. Just build traces. Is what it is. You know, it is what it is. And the other thing is, is that even if you do, even if you do want to farm relics, that's still okay because you'll still be building up materials to feed into your other uh, relics that you get later. So you might not be farming good relics, but you'll still be farming relic EXP. So it's actually fine. No way is Dr. Ratio free to play friendly. Free to play players will have him. No, he is free to play friendly, but it's free to play with patience. But that does not make a character inherently free to play friendly. No, it does. If you get a character for free, they're free to play friendly. But that's just how it is. Like, Dr. Ratio at a point will be very good if you just wait and get good relics. 
you get him for free, so he is free to play friendly. Yes, he can eventually explode like every single thing in the entire game, and that's really mm. fun and cool and poggers. Like the reality is, is not every character requires that level of investment in order to be usable. My account is- That's not true. You gotta build a team around ratio. You have to build a team around every character in the game. Not when you also need specific characters. Like who? Like who do you who do you need for ratio that you can't just use on other people? Like you you have to build around every character. Every you can't run any character by themselves. Can't you just use Tingyu and Bella? Topaz? You don't need Topaz. Makes them better, but you don't need them. You can use Pale and Ting Yun, and you're fine. Like, Acheron also, like, you can use Pela and Gwynaithen. Now, if you were to use a character like Sparkle, yeah, sure, she'd do a lot more damage, but, like, you don't need that. His level 64, not even 65. I have farmed relics approximately four times ever. Like, I feel like, I feel like new players will really understand how insane Pela is when they max her ultimate trace. Because the difference between playing the game with a Pela and without a Pela is quite depressing. Like, to be honest, they need to power creep the character. Because she's too broken. Because, like, I'll be real, there's way too many OP four stars, like, for people to complain about this game. Like, let's be real. Asta's OP. Ting Yun is OP. Pela's OP. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're way, like, they're insane. Like, they are insane. Now, the thing that new players can complain about is, man, this game is brutal. This game is brutal before you get two good healers, right? Like, playing the game with Fire, MC, Shielder, and Natasha is terrible. Like, it's so boring. I'm glad Lynx is at least pretty good. But, like, by the time that you should be expecting to clear everything in the game, which is probably around four or five months, if you're playing every day hardcore, you should have gotten a banner by now. A banner or two minimum, right? A banner or two. So with some patience and some good planning, you should just be fine. The thing majority of players who are casual have worse experience when it comes to HSR because they aren't able to clear story content unless they grind. Even Hoyoverse noticed it during the 2.1 story boss. Yeah, and then they nerfed it. My Akron has horrendous stats. Gallagher is they better. Oh, get, you can get Lynx and Gallagher for free? Then great, that issue doesn't even exist anymore. Easy. Gallagher links, you're good to go. Yeah, I heard Gallagher is like insane with Acheron. Buffed right now because of Sparkle and some of my blessings. Realistically speaking, my Acheron is not well built. And Acheron does very decent damage and has completely transformed my account. I have been able to clear content that I, j I could not do before. You do have to invest in every character, but the level investment is different. And if you don't actually understand that and you're, and you're, and you're, typing in your fingers like well every character needs investment yeah no shit but the reality is is that some need a lot of investment and some True. characters will do double the damage of those characters with like no investment yeah and that's that's exactly what i was saying earlier and recommending characters mm. blindly based on an assumed level of investment mm means that i agree that's why people who say you should build zealer just cope because they say well if you build zealer then she's really broken it's like okay yeah but if you put the and i said this earlier you put the exact same relics that you have on a zealer on a jing liu the damage i could show that i should show that i should do a video where i do that same relics same little orb and trace jing liu versus a zealer or i can do that with an acheron versus a zealer you know what i'm saying like I, I mean, do it. I should do it. You are telling people Same team. not only like unhelpful and bad information that will actively hurt them, but also. So this is kind of just like, this isn't really about the issues with Honkai Star Rail. This is more of a video of Hexju saying guide makers are shit for this game. Because what this video to me is saying, the people who give advice for this game suck. And there's some minor inconveniences that I don't enjoy is how I'm taking this video. So make it discouraging to play the game. Cause I'll be honest, I was pretty discouraged for a while because I was like, I'm building this ratio. Everybody said this ratio was gonna be like really good for my account. And I hate him with a the passion of and, and fury of a thousand suns and he does no damage. It would be nice if the recommendations we made kept in mind an actual regular player's experience. The reality is, is the vast majority of Twitch- now now, I will say, 
I will say, for guide makers giving advice, right, I feel like it'd be very easy for saying, this character is good at low investment, but they're insane at high investment. And then explain how a character truly performs at all investment levels, right? So like for low investment characters, those are what more free to play casual players are gonna wanna pull for. Viewers have very high level of investment into the game, into the community. A lot of you guys watch a ton of Honkai Star Rail content creators. It's easy to lose track of the primary player base when the majority of the people that speak in your stream, the majority of other content creators are incredibly sweaty about this game. Yes. Not negative, just true. Means that there are people who are left out and it is going Very to fair. prevent this game from growing. It is a problem that this community in the, the, the guides and like basically everything about this game is relatively unwelcoming to new players. Yeah, I mean, let's just be, let's just keep it 100%. Like when Mr. Pokey recommends you to have 175 speed, you know, it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, give me it. Uh, give me it, man. Yeah, I'll go for it, man. Yeah, just have two characters at 175. And then they really start to pop off. Yeah, it's a little bit out of touch. I wouldn't say this is all guide makers, obviously. And and then there's the difference between knowing between a guide and a showcase. Ease would you know what? Maybe Jing Yuan Mains was right about Mr. Pokey. You know? Hey, hey, you know what? I'm a you know what? Let's leave him a message. Reddit, Jing Yuan Mains. Y'all were right about Mr. Pokey. He is very out of touch with his guides. He is very racist against our general. He killed my fam. Uh, 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 anyways, let's continue on here. It, there's a high barrier to entry on a lot of levels. The best thing about the community is that it has incredible content creators. I think that... Eh, they are. Uh, they are. There's a lot of good content creators, and then there's just a lot of shitters, too. Let's just be real. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't say they have incredible content creators, right? Like, I'll be real. I'll be real. You you compare any of the content creators or Honkai Star with Mr. Beast? Hey, bro, they're garbage. Okay? Hey, all right. Hey, all right. They, they're okay. Yeah, they, hey, they, they ain't Mr. Beast. They ain't, now, they're better than Genshin's content creators. That's for damn sure. Whew, not even close. But Mr. Beast? Ain't nobody beat Mr. Beast. Good God. Or Top G, Andrew T <laughs> Boyo Games, especially Honkai Star Rail, have some Trump. of the best you know, they ain't Donald Trump. Let's be real. Most interesting, hardworking content creators of like any game. And so that- Cap. Cap. Nah, it's Cap. Nah. Hell no. No, bro, are you kidding me? Nah, it don't really work that hard. Uh, let me ask you, chat, chat, what content creator for this game works hard? Hey man, there's this new unit. Put the ice set on the ice girl. Hey right, man, put the quantum set on the ice girl because it's uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty good. Ah, uh, it's content creating. It's not hard. You just go okay. New character. Go on to Reddit. Oh, that's what they did. Okay. Hey guys, I got this new guide. Eh, I'll be real, bro. Content creating is not hard. It's just not. And trust me, this is from a guide. I've made guides. Okay, I've I've made guides with millions of views. Many. Eh. I thought it was the hardest job in the world. Nah, this shit's easy, bro. Like, 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 I, I'll be real, man. If you if you go into somebody's video, be like, thank you for all your hard work for this Arlon guide. Nah, it really ain't that hard. What well, way, hey, guys? What would you rather do? Make a guide for uh, make a guide for uh, what the f her name? Acheron. Make a guide for Acheron or uh, work a construction job for eight hours. What would you rather do? Uh, nah, it's not hard. And I just want I just want to address that. It's easy, but it's easy, guys. It's really easy. Anyways. That brings people in. Tectone is a good entertainer. Mr. Pokey's a good entertainer. I'm all right. Uh, Sevy makes great guides. Bra nah, she don't. Saxophone is very sweet, makes good guides. Nah, he's creepy. Guides. Um, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of really, really, really good honkai star rail content creators and also here's the thing hex don't i'm not i'm not a honkai star rail content creator okay i'm a guy who plays honkai star rail right but i, I don't make content for this game i just don't right like i'm not even in the cc program i just you know 
I, I happen to like it. So I make shit for it, but it ain't my job. I have no intent to do so. I mean, to be honest, I just go, okay, Honke Star Road community. How can I piss these people off? Pretty much all we do here, man. That's pretty much it. Hey, I, I'm just a reactor. I, I, I see, I prefer the phrase content thief. Okay. Or, or, or better content transformer. That's much better. Let me tell you why I've taken your 11 minute video. We're 40%, 70% of the way through it. And I've turned it into an hour long feature length film. Okay. I call myself a transformer. Call my ass Megatron. But it is so hard to get into the game when so much is assumed. Have you ever gone into like a math class and it was a math class that like you did not belong in, right? Like sure. you, you skipped algebra one and you went to algebra two because they thought yep. you was smart or whatever. Yep. And then they're telling you shit and assuming a bunch of shit that you're supposed to know. And you're like, I got to go back down to algebra one. Y'all, y'all, yep. y'all have all these letters in here. I was still on long division, bitch. What is this? Oh yeah, like dude, like oh my god, watching these content critters for Genshin back like actually makes me want to blow my brains out. Like it's so cringe. Like all these mother, like speaking in these acronyms that nobody knows what they are except for them over Genshin Impact. Like oh my god, have you watched the Zajef video? Oh my god, and they have like these graphs for this shit bro get that shit the fuck out of my face like that shit is oh god it's so cringe bro it's so cringe like dude dude that's the biggest issue is that these dumb don't know how to talk to people unless they talk like giga dorks right like that's the reason why my guys were so good is because i spoke to people in a way that people can actually understand no matter their knowledge level but people have forgotten that art and i'll be real man if you're not speaking in layman's you're actually stupid genuinely you're not smart because you're using big words if you could have chosen a word that is more easily to understand by more people and express the same point and you're not doing that that's an error on you that's not our issue for not knowing these mickey mouse terms Okay, it is important to speak in a way that everybody can understand. Like, for example, if you speak English and Japanese and you come up to me and start speaking Japanese when you know I speak English, that doesn't make me a dumbass, sweetheart. That makes you the dumbass. Okay, because here's the thing, I'm not trying to learn Japanese. That's shit that I don't need to know. Want to know why? Because I live in America. All right, now let's continue. This. That's how it feels getting into Honkai Star Rail sometimes, where it's just like there's so much that is being assumed that I understand that it's like, God damn, I don't know how to get into this shit. Yep. I'm talking about this from a genuine place of like adoration for this community and for its content creators. I love this game. I love the community. I love my community. It is important to note that we are making it very difficult for new players to come in. I guess to me, this is sort of a, ooh, Ooh. Okay, surely this just one shots, right? It's the easiest one shot known to man. Oh, got one of them. I want to start talking about Close. like theory crafting stuff and like guide making stuff, like not making guides specifically, but I want to start making um certain parts of my content about what the actual experience of playing the game with a character is. And and I want there to be new players because if the game stops bringing people in, it's gonna be hard for the community to survive, maybe not this year and yep. maybe not next year, no, but as time goes on, more uh, new player friendly games will take over and this game will sort I, of okay. actually so I agree that the game needs new players. However, I wouldn't say that new players need to grasp how higher end end game content works or they'll quit because the majority of players just play the story, right? They play the story, they pull for the characters because they like them and then they quit. Like the majority of players don't even do Memory of Chaos or Pure Fiction. They don't care. Like they play for fun. They do the little mini games. They do the quest and then they stop playing, right? Like the hardcore content really doesn't matter. Now it's very good for streamers who get to advertise the game with these methods. But I mean, the majority of players aren't gonna quit because they don't get the content. Because I mean, the majority of players don't play it for that. Trophy into being a game that is primarily 
full of sweaties and people who have uh, who who won't leave. And yeah. I will say that uh, respectfully, what does that remind you of? A game of people who are maybe a bit too dedicated and sweaty and have been playing for a million years and just won't stop or acknowledge problems. What, gotcha. what community? That does sound like another community that we know it of does to look me. Like another and I don't want this community to be like that community. I don't want it to be like Honkai Star Rail could never win Zen. You know what's really sad? You know what's really sad? Unfortunately, Hex, it's too late, okay? The Honkai community became a lot more similar to the Genshin community uh, lately. Now, I'm hoping that changes, but like, I mean, when you even talk about meta in this game, you already get people freaking the fuck out and saying like, oh no, I'm the best, I'm the best. When you ask how to build a character, they'll give you like seven different builds. Like people already take meta in this game way too seriously and it's so cringe. Like it is, it is so cringe. What's this? Uh, hold up. Lamau, you're just gonna say the same thing about the next gacha game. You, oh yeah, you think so? Okay. Okay, you're right. Sure, man. Yeah, I'll just say the same thing about the next gotcha game. Because let me get this right. So because I said that about Genshin, and because I said that about Honkai Star Rail, you're saying that I'm going to say this about everything. Right? So even though I played Ring of Heroes, Summoner's War, Epic Seven, Skylanders, Sinnoh Alice, Ulala, Uloon, right? You're, you're going to say that I'm going to say the same thing about all of them. No, I don't think so. You want to know why? Because this issue didn't exist until Genshin Impact existed. And you want to know why I probably will say it for the next game? Because Genshin Impact existed. And this is an issue that caused by Genshin Impact breaking the Nomi barrier and spawning the most unbearable, overly positive, toxic fans in pretty much all of gacha games. It's just the truth. You can say, yeah, now you're going to say that there's too much ketchup on your burger. Well, yeah, you put too much ketchup on your burger, right? Like, the, whether you want to agree to it or not, Genshin Impact spawned some of the worst, like one of the worst fan bases of all time. Positive toxic. Wait, do you not know what that means? Wait. You don't, you don't know what that means? Okay, let me explain to you. Uh, let me explain to you toxic positivity. Here we go, man. I'm going to educate you because you're trying to act like I misspoke. No, brother, man, you are dumb. All right, let's explain this shit real quick. I thought it was a, thought it was a pretty fair known term, but if you don't, I'll bring it up to you, okay? Toxic positivity is the belief that no matter how dire or difficult a situation is, people should maintain a positive mindset. While there are benefits to being optimistic and engaging in positive thinking, toxic positivity rejects all difficult emotions in favor of a cheerful and often falsely positive facade. Does that make sense? Do you get it? I sure do hope so. Right, I want to finish this video. I want to move on. We got a minute left. Yeah, AKA delusional. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Unless zone zero comes. Because no matter. No matter how bad Genshin gets, people say, ah, oh, it's fine, guys. Yeah, it's fine. Final Fantasy XIV fan base, when you say anything bad about the game, yeah, they're pretty rough, too. I'm not going to lie, man. Oh, my God. Final Fantasy XIV, when you skip the story, oh, my God, it's so cringe. It is so cringe. He's out or something, you know? When the game only gets more and more difficult to get into, when the community only gets more and more sweaty and less understanding of the new player experience... That is going to continuously over time hurt the longevity of the game. So that's my point. I don't know if this was like relatable or helpful. And I'm sure a lot of people in the comments are going to be like, we don't need to cater to every kind of player, but it's like, we should cater to like maybe more players though. We should cater to players who might like the game, but maybe are turned away when their ratio that they were told was going to save our account um is actually horrendous to play and does no damage until you're like level 70 and have been farming relics like every day for a bill i think this video was very good but i think the title is just cap i don't think this is an issue with honkai star rail i think the majority of hex's issues are the people who are giving her information are just bad at doing that job <laughs> like i'll just the majority of the issues with that video was the people who make guides for this game are not making good guides. Because, like, the majority of those issues she just said exist outside of the game, right? That's just my opinion, right? So what I'm saying is, Hex, just stop talking to Mr. Pokey, and you'll be okay, all right? You'll be better. If you want me to help you with your account, I'll do it anytime you want, okay? I thought, I thought, this, was a, I thought this was a great video, great video, but it's more so... Honkai Star Rail has minor inconveniences that I was not prepared for, and guide makers suck balls. Hey, 
Hex, I agree. I agree. True. Anyway, so give the video a like, comment, and subscribe. Yo, mods, uh, spam the YouTube link and uh, shout out our channel. Appreciate y'all. See y'all in the next one. Peace.